Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I am standing here on Mount of Rahmah of Mercy. This is the very place where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu gave his last farewell pilgrimage message in Arafat, the, uh, the, the pilgrimage he conducted and where he called the world to peace and where he laid the foundation of a peaceful society where peace can be lived and shared, where it can be reality. He also, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah's peace be upon him. He actually taught us Rahmah, mercy. He lived mercy, he showed mercy, and he called people to mercy because peace cannot be built except on this cornerstone that is called mercy, that is called justice, that is called respect. All of these are the foundations of a peaceful society. Let us all become the Muslim messengers of peace. This is what Islam is all about, spreading peace. أدي صلاة جوا أدي أدي صلاة مع كلات نعم نعم صلاة مع كلات When the Second World War ended, everyone thought a new era of peace, prosperity, and human excellence would lead the world to a civilization like never before. Unfortunately, the Cold War that followed led the superpowers to exhaust all efforts to invent the deadliest and most powerful weapons of mass destruction and extermination. Globally, peace never happened. War continued in different parts of the world. Conflicts continue to increase to this date. Countries and nations have become divided due to ideologies of East and West, economies of North and South, and classifications of humans from black to white. Locally, societies still witness discrimination, persecution, and intolerance because of racial, ethnic, and religious tensions. The struggle of many nations around the world against colonialism and authoritarian rule still continue to this day. The sanctity of life and human dignity have become the lowest priority compared to economic or political gains amidst pogroms of ethnic cleansing and daily crackdown on freedoms and civil liberties. Our human values are compromised in the name of safeguarding our national interests, which are most of the time the interests of a few selfish minds that do not see human dignity as their priority. Who can then bring peace to the world? Can only politicians and world leaders bring peace? Can the powerful and the wealthy ensure peace? Who are the genuine peacemakers? It is undoubtedly those who believe in justice, mercy, and the equality of all human beings who can build, bring, and ensure peace. Those who believe in the sanctity of life and dignity of everyone. Interestingly, these values are shared by all the world's faiths and mentioned in all the religious scriptures and books of wise thinkers. Inasmuch as religions can be part of this big problem, they can likewise be the solution to it. In the words of the late Christian theologian Hans Kuhn, there will be no peace among the nations without peace among the religions. There will be no peace among the religions without dialogue among the religions. Assalamu alaikum. This is the greeting of Muslims. Assalamu alaikum, which means may Allah's peace be upon you. It is a daily renewal of commitment to peace at every encounter with other individuals and groups. It is also the greeting in heaven and among the angels. One of God's names is As-Salam, which means peace or the source of peace. He invites us to be peacemakers and live peace in this world. He says, Wallahu ila dar And God does call to the home of peace. 
God sent his messengers to humanity throughout the ages to teach people how to live with one another in peace and harmony and how to connect with God, the ultimate source of peace. Muslims believe that the last messenger, Muhammad peace be upon him, did fulfill that task and established peace. By the end of his mission of 23 years, he was able to transform a lawless society of warring tribes driven by endless ire of vengeance and inherited conflicts into one ummah made of brothers and sisters from different backgrounds, colors and races. He was able to bring people closer to God and closer to one another. This was his mission and the mission of every messenger of God before him. It is also our mission, the mission of those who choose to follow their path. Allah Almighty sent Prophet, peace be upon him, as a mercy to the world. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We sent you not but as a mercy for all the world. He taught that God loves those who are merciful. Be merciful to those on earth. Allah will cover you with more mercy. He also said, إِرْحَمُوا تُرْحَمُوا وَاغْفِرُوا يَغْفِرِ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Be merciful to others. Allah will be merciful to you and forgive. Allah will forgive you. Prophet Muhammad's life is the best example of peacemaking. He manifested peace, lived it and called humanity to it. He had all the ingredients and elements with which peace can be made. He was known to be truthful and trustworthy even amongst his enemies. He was selected at a young age to moderate and arbitrate in times of conflicts and disputes. He did not take vengeance, but rather forgave his enemies when he was able to punish and retaliate. He respected the fates of others and built bridges of communication and cooperation. He signed peace treaties and loved to join peace alliances and those who wanted to maintain peace and common good. Very often, he would express his interest in joining alliances where disputes will be settled and conflict will be solved. Once he became a ruler, he issued Medina Charter, where everyone's rights and beliefs were protected and where peace, justice, human dignity, coexistence and cooperation were the priorities of the newly formed nation. He was humble, approachable, kind, merciful and willing to listen to people's advices and opinions that sometimes differed from his own. He was strongly against dividing people based on their ethnicities, colors, races. He repeatedly called to respect everyone and grow the seeds of love in the heart of everyone. He taught us to be peaceful and pray for peace. Every time a Muslim finishes one of the five daily prayers, he or she says, Allahumma anta salam, wa minka salam, ilayka yarji'u salam, hayyina rabbana bis salam, wa adkhilna al jannata dar al salam, tabarakta ya dal jalali wal ikram. O God, you are the embodiment of peace. Peace flows back and forth through you. So grant us our Lord with the blessings of peace. Make paradise the house of peace our abode. You are the blessed owner of majesty and honor. He taught us the easy and simple way to gain success and bliss in the hereafter by saying to us, Afshu salam, spread peace. Wa at'imu ta'am, share food. Wa silu al arham, keep good relations with your kith and kin. وَصَلُّوا النَّاسُ نِيَامٍ Pray while people are sleeping. تَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامٍ You will enter paradise in peace. He also taught us when one person asked him, أَيُّ الْإِسْلَامِ خَيْرٍ Which is the best Islam? He replied, You feed the hungry and you say salam to those you know and those you don't know. Peace was his general principle even in war. 
Allah Almighty says in the Quran, وَإِن جَنَحُوا لِلسَّلْمِ فَجْنَحْ لَهَا فَجْنَحْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ But if the enemy inclines towards peace, you have to incline towards peace and trust in Allah. For Allah is the one who hears and knows. He summed up all his mission by saying, I was only sent to humanity to show them how to behave with each other in the best manners. None of us is perfect, but if we work together sincerely for peace, we will overcome insanity, hatred, and those who want to divide the children of Adam and Eve. We should join those who are around the world saying, enough killings, enough bloodshed. The Quran tells us that God Almighty wants peace. His name is As-Salam.